Um, and we have a LA 31 because it just like showed up too, so that's not in Lafayette Parish, but our neighbors. Um, I'm going to introduce our panel really quickly. Um, Jackie Lyle here is going to moderate this panel, and it's our last one. It's only 30 minutes, so we're going to try to jump into it, and then um, we'll get ready for Major Handy coming, setting up behind us. Um, I'm going to start on the end. Claire Cook, say hi. She's the, uh, well, I'll let her talk about her, but I want her to tell a lot about what's been happening at Basin Arts, um, because a lot of what with Create, what do you want, why are um, a lot of what we want to do with CREATE is try to encourage a lot more collaborations and that's kind of what's been happening very organically at Basin Arts. So I want to talk more about that, so who's going to take that on. Miss Grace Hamilton of Grace Hamilton Dance Academy. Yes. Of the Academy of the Arts, sorry. Um, is here she's going to talk a lot about the programming that she does. And then this is Leah Porter, we've never actually met, so nice to meet you. <laughs> and she's going to talk a lot about um, a lot of youth outreach, I think, is what you're mostly talking about. So I'm going to hand this on to Jackie. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Kate. I noticed like everybody's running out the room because we're talking about dance. So we're so glad to be here. Um, just for starters, the dance, some dance interests in Lafayette have been meeting already. So we've kind of been creating a little creative of our own. And in our meetings, we came up with a, a vision and that's to create a thriving community for dance where there's local access for dancers to professional development, where there are more performance spaces and more rehearsal spaces, and where there are more opportunities for collaboration within the dance community with itself and within other parts of our community. And because we're going to be talking with some specific dance language, just a couple of words, four words at your little class rate. Um, when we talk about dance today, we're talking about dance as art and not social dance. When we say pre-professional company, we mean a company of dancers who've been selected probably to audition, but they're pre-professional, they're not being paid, as opposed to a professional dance company where dancers would be paid a salary or a stipend for their work, both for rehearsal and for performance. And when we talk about a studio, we're talking about probably a for-profit enterprise that teaches dance, where parents pay tuition and bring their kids. So, those are your little glossary words for today. And we're just going to go around and let Leah start, and we cut her down to two minutes. Grace gets to talk to th for three because she's the elder stateswoman. And I was Leah's teacher, too, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a proud student of Grace. Um, my name is Leah Porter. Um, I am from Lafayette, Louisiana. Um, and I'm a dance educator, choreographer. Um, and I actually have my own performing arts school, my conservatory, um, and we cater to girls and boys ages four um, to about 20, 21. We don't get rid of them at 18 because um, we like for them to continue their education. Um, but we like to empower and motivate and inspire through dance. Um, I've had the privilege and honor of working under and training under Ms. Grace Hamilton. I spent 16 years at Hamilton Academy of the Arts, so that's where I received my formal training. Um, and after high school, I went off into uh, the dance world, done some amazing things, and got to travel and teach and um, just bring back amazing things to our community the same way that Ms. Grace has done. So I learned a little bit. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm really a huge advocate for the arts, um, especially when it comes to kids, because I feel like the exposure to the arts, especially dance, is, is important. Um, kids get visual arts in school, kids get music in school, um, but kids do not get dance in school. Um, so I really feel like that is important to expose our kids to um, all forms and facets of the arts. Okay, so Jackie told me I have three minutes. I'm going to try to hold to that, but I told her I'm 56, and I've been doing this, we're starting our 37th season, so I'm going to do what I want. Alright, so Hamilton Academy was founded in 1981, and
And we started because uh, there weren't a lot of schools available for ballet specifically for uh, young girls of color. And so initially that's where we started out. Uh, in, in 1981, I was a major at UL. I think I'm going the wrong way, okay. Top nine, we're gonna try this again. That should, that's taking up so my two minutes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Three minutes. Three minutes for you. Okay. So we started in 1981 um, as Just Dance. We are actually Hamilton Academy of the Arts. And we offer, our mission is, Hamilton Academy of the Arts is an institution that promotes brotherhood and understanding through the use of the performing arts. Dance, I feel, is a way to bridge our cultures together. Statements, when we move, when we perform, and we teach performing arts, we should be able to touch our audience's soul. Uh, so it's not just about strict entertainment, but we try to tell stories. Alan Amy once said that uh, the best stories that we tell are the ones that talk about who we are inside. And so that's what we do it with our students. We try to teach them to, to learn who they are inside, use that inner strength, and share that with their audiences about who they are, their culture, their history, their traditions. Uh, so uh, Hamilton Academy of the Arts has been a change agent for using the arts to make a difference in our communities. We do a production called Roots the Journey that traces our African-American history from slavery to the election of President Obama and kind of how our culture has changed over time. So we teach that to our students as well. And we try to empower and share that with other audiences so that we can bridge gaps that are maybe separated. Because when we understand each other's culture a little bit better, then we can understand each other a little bit better. Our four components are dance, music, theater, and martial arts. And we're talking about dance today, so I kind of narrowed that down. In our program, what makes us different uh, in terms of education is that we're not a dance studio, per se, per se, because what we do is, both of my parents were educators, so I come from an education background. My dad was military, so we've created a curriculum. Our program is curriculum-based. It's not about coming, you take some dance classes, and then you do a recital. We uh, matriculate our students from preschool uh, up through 12th grade, and our curriculum is actually a graded, guided curriculum. And so some of the programs that we offer are traditional classical ballet, the tap, the jazz, the point, um, hip-hop, liturgical, Latin dance. This year we started doing another, well actually two years ago, we started doing a program called Qigong. Uh, when we have a, a woman who's from Denmark who comes to the U.S. twice a year and teaches a medical Qigong class, which is a healing art form that uh, takes you through the body from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head. And it's a healing movement. So it's a, it's a practice that we teach and we, we share it in the form of workshop. It's a wonderful workshop. If you ever get a chance to attend, you would just absolutely love it. Um, and so I'm not going to go into this uh, too many things, but we have four award winning performance companies. We have a senior company, ages. Yeah, you right up in my space. <laughs> I was given a scholarship to 
uh, teach dance to autistic and uh, special need kids that have Down syndrome. So we're getting ready to add that component to our program so that they can actually come on our stage at the Hyman Center and perform with the rest of the students. So inclusion is what we're about. Uh, and the future Hamilton Academy, one of the things that I would like to do is build a smart studio using the modern technology that is part of who we are, where we're moving globally uh, into a new space, uh, continue to, cre to create creative spaces for our dancers to compose. We have had students, I have had students who love dance so much, they have walked from South Lafayette to our studio in North, in North Lafayette. That's just how committed they are to dance in our community. I've had students waiting for me in front of the studio who have taken the bus, a cab, walked uh, for miles and miles just to take class. So dance is very, very important to me because we've trained about 4,000 students and I have seen firsthand it make a huge difference in their life. Uh, we have about 95% of our graduates have advanced college degrees. Uh, I'm mean, sorry, they have college degrees and about 50% of them have advanced college degrees. They're doctors, they're lawyers, they're professional uh, dancers, they're engineers, they're teachers, they're mothers, they're fathers. And so we're very proud of what we have done. Jack, I know my three minutes is up, but I want to say that the time is arts, almost done. <laughs> the arts is so important and dance does make a difference in the lives of kids in a huge, huge way. And it's very important. And one other thing that I'd like to add about dance, and it's why dance is probably my favorite art form, it's not because I just like to see it, but in dance, it's one of the few times in society where one person can touch another person without it being sexual, without it being punitive, or without it being violent. And that's one of just the unusual characteristics of dance. Claire, why don't we move a little bit? Sorry. Great. Yes, my name is Claire Cook. I'm the director of Basin Arts, a collaborative art space where dance has a big footprint, both in professional dance in our community as well as adult, primarily adult dance for um, as a recreation as well. And I just want to get to the chatting, so we'll we'll learn more as we go. <laughs> okay. So some of the questions that we wanted to explore today with you um, and is what is the role of, of dance and movement in our community and in our culture? I think that one thing, um, I have the privilege of working with lots of different populations, both young, old, uh, disabled, maybe sometimes uh, full-bodied, you know, many different populations, but I think that ripping off of what Jackie mentioned in terms of the power of touch and the power of human connection. Dance is one of the only nonverbal assets that we have, and it's sort of one of those things It's not necessarily always about technical proficiency, but it's about human connection. So literally the ability to touch someone and to connect, focus, eye contact, nonverbal communication. I think dance is a huge asset to that greater conversation and I think in our community, especially when there is disparity or when there is disconnection, human movement can be sort of a, an outlet and an inroad into that. So I think dance, that's the very seed of it and then you know, from that point we can build up the professional art form of it. And um, Leah, from your standpoint, what's the status of dance in our community? Is it, is it a healthy? position right now? <laughs> um, I think that our, our dance community in Lafayette, Louisiana, I think that it is at a healthy place. Um, but I do think we have room for growth, and I think that growth would be within collaboration. Um, I feel like our dance community is a little separated. Um, we have how many studios, Ms. Grace? 24 in the Lafayette area. Um, and of course, I know Ms. Grace very well because I studied at Hilton Academy of the Arts. Um, but I do not have a connection with any of the other um, studio owners. Um, I have a really good relationship with Claire because we've done work together at Basin Arts. Um, I brought my students there to have class. I've taught a art class at Claire's um, uh, you know, performing arts center. Um, so I just think more collaboration within 
not just three people, but everyone um, would make it even more healthier. Can I chime in? So I think the, the fact that we do have over 20 private studios is actually, that's a huge asset in our community because it means that if each of those have 200 students, if you do the math, think how many young people are going to a dance class every week. So we have this giant interest in this giant industry in terms of our cultural economy. There's a, there's a lot of money being invested in dance for children. And then what's happening is that 18, 19, you're finishing high school, if these students make it all the way through a dance program, there are very few opportunities for dance to continue and to deepen as an art form for these students. So if you're purely from the, the financial side of it, if you're a parent and you're paying you know, several thousand dollars a year for your student to take dance for sometimes 15, 16 years, and then what if that child has an ability and a desire to continue and sort of naturally move on to the next step professionally, I feel like our community has a healthy training uh, environment for training, but could be stronger in terms of professional opportunities, both moving forward through the university and beyond. And I think that's something that um, could not only benefit the students who are training in dance, but also could benefit our general population in terms of more cultural and artistic and leisure activities. I think it's important to point out that UL has the only dance major in a public university and it's a strong, healthy program, yet there are no professional performance opportunities, or I should say little or no professional performance opportunities here. Dancers who want to be on stage and being paid have to leave, like other industries. So dance is an industry in that way, especially. Um, Leah, do you see some ways that we could overcome this challenge? of all this training and then know where to go? Um, I think overcoming it would take, um, I think more, more exposure to all types of dance. Um, I think there, there may be a disconnect between um, kids training for 15, 16 years on at a dance studio that's a little more recreational versus going to a university where it is non-recreational. So I think um, that our quote unquote non-recreational type of dancing here in Lafayette is not as big as it should be um, and the recreational kind of takes over so that when the kids want to transition, going to UL may not be the exact same thing as going to a dance studio. Whereas, whereas a kid that may come from Hamilton Academy who's getting way, uh, I want to say way more, but a little bit more, or may come from a conservatory base that's getting a little bit more of um, dance on a whole spectrum, may have an interest in going and majoring in dance. So I think kind of bridging that gap a little bit. I think, Jackie, one of the things that, that I would like to see happen here, we've done it at the state level, but I think there needs to be a collaboration between uh, the universities and the main studios to do some type of conference so that there, we can bridge that gap between the, the studio trained dancer who may want to major in dance and they can have a relationship with the university. So that right. there is let's start, not let's start such cultivating a, let's start a cultivating that relationship with the choreographic and dance yes. degree program. Yes, there's no reason why we have 20 something dance studios and most of the dance majors come from other parts of the state or other states. You know that that's to me that's a huge disconnect that can be addressed just by having a conversation. Claire, do you want to chime in on what could we do to enhance our efforts? Sure, I think exposure is a huge is a huge key, both communally, you know, connecting to the university, but I also think, and these are things that have been happening, but bringing in world class dance companies from other markets that has been happening for years. So, so let's just ask a question: yeah. How many of you here have been to see a professional dance company? We're not talking about a dance recital, okay? So you know. It's a show, right? Dance is entertainment, as just like almost any other kind of 
entertaining is entertaining. Go on. I didn't. No, no, it's great. Um, I think exposure is key in, in any field. So I think the more all people in our population, but especially students, maybe if we're talking about that component, start to see the many realms of dance as performance art, and, and that it doesn't all look the same, it doesn't all sound the same, feel the same. I think those are when those conversations can start to happen, because if you're a young student, you're naturally you're going to imagine your possibilities or emulate, emulate the things that you see right in front of you. So if the more that you can see, the more that you can be educated and exposed to all different forms of dance, both at a professional level and just in our community, I think it starts to open up the realm of possibilities. And then on top of that, I think it also allows for those young people to start to imagine what would it be like if we created most of that or more of that in our own community right. and take ownership over exposing our own community to more and raising the bar. Right. The other well, thing I, I want to just chime in right here, I think that is so important, that is dancers who dance for 15 years at studios are a, a huge audience as well as an opportunity for economic support for the dance community because dancers who've gone through the program, if we had a professional company or even a semi-professional company, I would certainly think that our dancers would support such a thing from a financial standpoint. Well, and I want to quit while Kate's holding up her one minute sign, just talk about some of your ideas about what are some best practices or case studies or examples that we might be able to implement. And I'm going to toss in one, Dance Source Houston is a collaboration between that huge dance community for promotion, for professional development, sharing of resources and costumes and other technical expertise. And when we look at places like Jacob's Pillow in the Berkshire Mountains, it's a huge economic generator. Um, that is the Ber one of the Berkshire's strongest tourist attractions. Um, is anybody else other best practices? Case I mean, this might skip ahead, but if we can work to start to build a more professional dance community of choreographers and professional artists within our own neighborhood and our own region, there are lots of models that start to look at the utilization of community spaces, both maybe like studio space, parks and rec, or studio, actual dance studios that sit empty until four o'clock every day. So we have a lot of the resources in our community, you know, beautiful spaces, sound system, technology, mirrors, from floors, all probably, you know, 20 of those studios could check off 10 of those must-haves to have a dance rehearsal. And they exist already in our community. So there are, there are several models um, in multiple communities. New York City has one, New York City Dance Spaces, and it's literally an online database which tracks the hundreds of available rehearsal spaces, and in several clicks of a button, you can decide, I want it to be this many, you know, this many square feet to have mirrors, to have this type of floor for this type of dance, and no more than $15 an hour for a rental. And so, I mean, that's maybe a little bit further down the road, but I think we have many of the resources here in terms of dance, you need a good floor, a sound system, hopefully some air conditioning, you know? But we don't ask a lot. So I think that like, by pooling our resources as a community, we actually, we're not so far off of having what we need to build our infrastructure professionally. Um, Claire's correct. Um, we have a lot of resources. Um, the only thing we lack is professional companies and people who can utilize those resources. And I think the infrastructure to make that all happen. Hopefully, yes. Yes, for the last uh, year and a half or so, I recently returned um, originally from here, but I was in New York City for a decade and I've come home. And I'm excited to say that in the last year and a half to two years, um, through Basin Arts and through my own dance company, we've produced two professional shows at the Kidiana Center for the Arts using all local performers, and they've all been paid for rehearsal and performance. And we've mostly sold out all of those shows, which means that people have actually come and responded. And they've been 100% supportive.
supported through community funding. Uh, one of those performances touching loss is through WIDA funding and through an Arts Art grant, through individual donors, through community partnerships. And all of that money has been generated inside of our community and been paid back out directly to local artists, dancers, composers, set designers, visual artists, all in our community. And so that's, that's happened just in two years' time. But I think I'm one person, but if we had five more dance companies and five more choreographers doing that, now we're really talking about some serious economic impact. Can I ask a question? Yes. Short of having a professional company in the area, uh, and so many studios, has, have there been attempts to perhaps hand pick, cherry pick, a couple of your most advanced students and have a joint program representing multiple studios so that what you're really doing is featuring the best of your best throughout the community as opposed to an evening of seven year olds. I mean my nieces yeah, so I sit through their programs and all the <laughs> seven year old programs and uh, seven year olds dancing. But is would that help to develop an audience here? In, the, in this area for finer performance levels. Sure. Um, in fact, actually speaking just personally, and then I'm sure these ladies can chime in. So Basin Arts, which is the collaborative arts organization that I'm representing here today, we, we offer very few youth classes. It's more of just like experiential classes, workshops. But our focus um, is professional dance and is a dance program for catering to professional level dancers. So both of those shows that I was speaking about, uh, Touching Loss and Stir, most recently at the Katie Center for the Arts, it was an open community audition, uh, welcome and including dancers from across the region. And it was it was chosen, you know, based upon the, the dancers that suited those roles best. And I was working with dancers from Lafayette Ballet Theater, I was working with dancers from the university, I was working with dancers who have you know, lived in Los Angeles and then returned home. So I sort of feel like I have this sort of secret guilty pleasure when I'm working with all of these dancers. I'm like, wow, this is such a treat to what you say, work with some of the best of the best all within our community. And for the community to get, like the housing program, I think it's wonderful that you're starting children young while they're flexible, while they're, uh, open and uninhibited in move from movement, etc. I'm just wondering, because you're, you, you include so many different forms of dance, if an evening for people I can actually address that to, yes. to experience we have, I have been uh, I have dance. been meeting with the dance department at UL and with Jackie. Uh, one of the things that we had at the state level was the Louisiana Alliance for Dance. We did just that on the state level. And so I've been talking to the dance department, looking at how we can do that on a local level, using the university as the springboard to make it happen in terms of classrooms. And what we did at the state level was we brought in dance companies from around the state to do just that. So what I would like to see, that's one of my visions, is to do the same thing on a local level where we can pull in the best, where it's an adjudicated performance, um, where we pull in the best from the local dance studios, create workshops where there are master classes and performances, and we can come together maybe for a weekend or even a day if possible um, to make that happen. And Jackie's been wanting to do that as well for a long time. So uh, that is something we've been talking about. Uh, the challenge is to move to the next step to actually make it happen. That's where we are at the, we're, we're having a conversation. We want to say thank you so very much for your hosting. 
and the seats are available. Go get you all. I think very great afternoon. There's a uh, whoever's on the audio. We have an exit dance for you guys. So I'll go press play, and we're gonna dance out.